Right-wingers want you to think that Cuba is some sort of dystopian nightmare, but is it true? Take a look at this tweet from Larry Tonton and the video that he posted with it. In this he says, I'm in a taxi going through central Havana. It's dirty, corrupt, and desperately poor. This is the death touch of socialism. It's the same all over the world. And you see, this is really funny, because it speaks to the way that these conservatives view the world. Everything to them is purely aesthetic, and they don't actually take a second to think about the deeper meaning of society as a whole. Because first and foremost, what do you see? What I see is a walkable city that people are walking in, especially with their children, feeling perfectly safe. In fact, this clip from the YouTuber Azure Scapegoat, featuring a lecture from Michael Parenti, points out exactly the reality about the streets in Cuba. And I talked to a guy in Havana who says to me, before all I used to see here in Havana, you call this drab and dull, we see it as a cleaner city. It's true, you got up, the paint is peeling off the walls, but you don't see kids begging in the streets anymore, and you don't see prostitutes, always that was prostitutes. Prostitution used to be one of the biggest industries. And today, this man, is going to night school. He said, I can read. I can read. Do you know what it means to be able to read? Do you know what it means to be able not to read? You see, yes, Cuba has to deal with a lot of issues. It can have a difficult time getting things like concrete or paint or like other materials shipped to them because, of course, the United States has put an extreme embargo on them. But their streets are much safer than streets in American cities. They're much more walkable than American cities. And not only that, but the average person in Cuba has a far greater life expectancy than the United States on top of having more economic mobility and just economic stability across the board. And then when you compare Cuba before and after socialism, you realize that life in Cuba after socialism is so much better that it's not even close. I mean, quite literally, it was a country run by a brutal dictator who actively worked with organized crime to suppress any type of political dissent. So yeah, it turns out that Cuba under socialism is actually much, much better. But then ask yourself this question. Do rundown buildings exist in the United States of America? And the answer is, of course they do. Literally all over their country, there are people that are living in buildings that are far substandard. There are people living in places even like New York City, where the buildings are quite literally like roach infested. So let's not pretend that peeling paint is like the biggest problem in society. Because at least in Cuba, they have a system and structure to make sure that people are actually able to have like comfortable lives that are safe. Whereas in the United States, well, we might have some places that are aesthetic pleasing in these like futuristic cities or whatever the reality is our cities aren't really walkable our cities aren't nearly as safe as the cities in Cuba and in Cuba they don't really have these major societal problems of poverty in the same way that we have them in the United States because if you look at the poorest places in Cuba you'll realize something very very quickly it's that they are actually living much much better lives than the poorest people in the United States of America and so sure, Cuba doesn't spend its resources on making its cities look super brand new and lavish because they actually spend their resources on giving people health care and education. But that really speaks to the mindset of these right-wingers. They want to view themselves as separate from society. They want to have these magical places where they can live in complete luxury, no matter how many people outside of those areas are living in absolute poverty. Whereas socialist countries actually look at the people who are doing the worst and try to lift them up. And so no, Cuba isn't the richest society in the world. But that's not the goal of the Cuban government. The goal of the Cuban government is to make sure that everybody is cared for and has their needs met. In the United States, sure, we have some people that are living the life of luxury, but we also have way, way more people who are struggling to meet their basic needs. And so driving old cars or having some peeling paint on buildings isn't really a sign that Cuban society is collapsing or that they're all living in poverty especially considering that their literacy rate is far higher than ours. No, it's a sign that their priority is on people's actual lives and not just aesthetics.